been painting seashells for weeks now, missing the ocean, playing with my watercolors and admiring the intricate shapes. I want us to explore and paint a shell together. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through my entire watercolor painting start to finish and show you what I do to ensure a successful process. I have a few of these shells, large and small, around the house and the combination of rough and smooth surfaces, the angles and the way they catch light is fascinating. Approaching a new and complex subject like this shell can be a challenge with lots of steps that may seem daunting. Like where do I start and how do I piece this together on paper? So my first advice is let's agree right away that we can, if we feel like it, do several versions. Not only is it a very effective way to learn any medium, this instantly reduces any anxiety that you may experience about getting things right in one go. If you're a longtime follower, you know that I often do two, sometimes three variations of each composition that I like. And you can also observe this practice among many famous artists like Monet who painted ponds and haystacks or Degas with his famous ballerinas. So in this case, right away I decided I'm gonna do two shells. This composition I called Shelter. Maybe if you can spot a small shell nested inside the big one, you'll see why it got me thinking about a place of refuge and safety. This one doesn't have a name yet and I'm going to ask all of you for some ideas on how to name it. Once I'm all set up and ready, I usually start with an outline, leaving enough space around the subject I'm interested in, in this case a shell, so I can add additional elements to my composition later. I almost always freehand, but it's not essential. Tracing is absolutely fine, in fact I recommend it if you're not interested in practicing drawing because it requires a completely different set of skills, and I have an entire tutorial on tracing which I will link below along with the shell reference photo, courtesy of Ansplash. Leaving some space around can be very helpful if your subject is light or even pure white like this shell. Having a darker backdrop will be important but for now I just want to leave some room and we'll think about the background later. You can already have a composition in mind in which case you would add those elements right away but I prefer to have the background layer on my main subject painted first to see what colors I may need to complement it. The key before applying the color is to ask yourself, what is the goal of this painting? What am I trying to show? Is this a play of warm and cool colors? In this case, we can use a variety of frosty blues and warm glowing oranges. Or maybe it's the contrast of smooth texture on the inside of the shell and the rough edges of the outer surface. In this case, let's make sure to leave lots of highlights on the inner fold, literally painting around them to leave bright white paper because there's no white pigment in classic watercolor. And maybe use granulating brown pigments on the outer layer, accentuating the cracks and imperfections. Or maybe it's simply a beautiful silhouette of the shell that you're trying to show. In this case, you might only want to use a limited palette, even just one color like blue or ochre, creating a monochromatic painting with a strong outline making the protruding spikes look more prominent. <laughs> Now, of course, you can accomplish all these color variations and intricate shadows in one painting while also adding some other elements to build a very intricate composition. But personally, I think it's helpful to understand your primary goal first for every painting you work on, and this is going to dictate where you focus your efforts. It's particularly effective when you're learning watercolor techniques, focusing on one fundamental at a time. For example, this may be the first time you're using masking fluid and you want to understand how it works. So I'm using my Windsor Newton masking fluid to cover up 
the yellow stamens on hibiscus flowers. It's much easier to mask the light details on a subject like this, paint the petals with darker reds and pinks, and then erase it to add the light yellow details in the final stage. In watercolors, we always paint from light to dark, and so small light details are always difficult to paint around. I will show you how I did that in a minute. For now, I'm carefully applying the watery fluid with a rubber applicator. The best way to apply masking fluid, by the way, is with these rubber applicators or even a matchstick if you don't want to ruin your brushes. I will leave the link to this rubber tool in the video description below. On the other hand, if you enjoy an intricate painting, like a puzzle, you may want to attempt several things like color balance and shadow play in one composition. When I'm not working on tutorials with a specific watercolor topic, when I'm painting for myself, I often do just that. And I have to tell you, it sometimes leads to a bit of an overkill, which is exactly what happened in this case. You will see towards the end, I've managed to overwhelm my shell with bright pink flowers, which is why for my next shell, I was much more careful with my approach and it turned out much better, much more balanced. This white shell tutorial is coming out here on YouTube and is an extended real-time tutorial on Patreon next week. Back to the original shell that we're painting. As you can see, I've added two flowers pointing to the left, choosing my reference carefully so the direction of light matches the one on the shell. So from top right and down to the left. The shadows are strong, falling down from the top petals and even from the beautiful stamen in the middle. I enjoy these little details because they instantly add a 3D effect with one extra layer of color. Photos taken with ambient dispersed light make for a less realistic painting and we discuss this in this white rose tutorial. I'm less interested in petal texture so I'm going to simplify the veins. As you can see I'm trying to mimic the lines, lightly applying magenta with the tip of my brush. I call this technique an interrupted stroke. I'm not actually sure if there's an official name for it but essentially it's the best way to translate petal texture or even fur texture for that matter on paper without driving yourself crazy and trying to capture every detail. So basically I drag the brush across the petal, touch the paper lightly and then lift it. If you do this a few times the effect is roughly similar to that of a realistic petal that has a multitude of details and tiny tiny highlights which would be impossible to capture on this small sheet of paper. As you're painting along, I encourage you to keep asking yourself, what is the objective of each element I'm working on? And to help you with this question, I recommend digging a bit deeper. Think, what am I good at? And what am I interested in? When I look at the work of my students, it's always fascinating to see their different interpretations of the same subject that we paint every month on Patreon. And every artist, even as an early beginner, has a particular point of view, way of translating colors and shapes through their eyes and some may be more detailed oriented and enjoy tiny strokes and textures. The result is usually a very rich, interesting looking painting that I like to see up close and others have a strong sense of colors and are not afraid to apply bold hues, creating larger areas of visual interest. I like to appreciate those paintings as a whole, looking at the overall effect and the play of colors. So lean into what you love and what attracts you. Skip and simplify everything else. If you're not sure, look at your previous work and ask yourself what comes easily to you. What are you passionate about? There are no wrong answers. In this case, for example, I'm very interested in the play of light and shadow on the flower petals, so I focus on these larger shadows, creating really high contrast. I'm also hyper-focused on vibrant colors, which is technically also my weakness, and because I didn't choose one thing to focus on, it all kind of started falling apart once I've added the purple petunia. Nothing wrong with this flower in and of itself, but bold colors and intricate shadows really distract from the delicate shell, so they overwhelm it. All that is to say, there will be times when your patience is tested, but if you know you enjoy certain techniques and certain things, you can plan your layers and your composition elements differently next time, which is exactly what I did in my next shell painting. 
So now masking fluid is off and I can add the light yellow stamens as I promised I would. These are the things that I can focus endlessly on. Just tiny, tiny strokes which are not necessary if you don't enjoy this. And as a variation in the Patreon version of this hibiscus flower, I simply painted around the stamens and didn't use masking fluid at all. So our possibilities are endless. My biggest advice is to figure out one, maybe two things top to focus on in every painting and they can be learning objectives or simply things you're really good at and really enjoy. By zoning in on the specific topic, you can focus and accomplish so much. I still finish this composition because even though it's maybe too busy with color, I kind of like it as a reminder of my first painting that started my little obsession with seashells. I added a few layers and a soft shadow around the shell and I can already see this is not the most successful composition in the sense that I was way too ambitious to add all these flowers and the shell got a little lost. But the process was successful because I figured out what works and in the next painting I used a different shell with no leaves. I may even repaint the shell again with a completely different background, but now after almost 9 hours or 2 weeks of interrupted painting sessions, I know every spot and every shadow like the back of my hand. Most importantly, this painting was successful because I enjoyed it. Even as a professional illustrator, I assure you that we can't always control the results. Rather, making sure that your painting experience is successful and satisfying is a much more realistic and honestly much more important goal in the long run. And it's entirely up to you how you define the success. It can be as simple as studying one particular technique or exploring a new palette or learning how to paint something new like this shell. And I hope it got you inspired to try something new and explore your creativity with a new subject in a new painting. And if it's the flowers that caught your eye and you're more interested in botanical art, I have an entire playlist of step-by-step -step watercolor tutorials focusing on all sorts of botanical subjects so click on a thumbnail above and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video thank you for watching and painting with me i will see you next week